we want to find the solution to the given initial value problem. The first thing we should recognize about the differential equation is that it's a linear second order homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, which means the differential equation fits this form here, where a, b, and c are the constants, and therefore we can find the general solution to the differential equation using a characteristic equation given here, again where a, b, and c are the constant coefficients. So let's start by setting up the characteristic equation. Notice that a is one, b is one, and c is two. So we would have r squared plus r plus two equals zero. Well, unfortunately, this is not factorable because there are no factors of positive two that add to positive one. So we'll have to solve this using the quadratic formula given here, where again, a is one, b is one, and c is two. So instead of x, we'd have r. We'll have r equals negative b or negative one plus or minus the square root of b squared or one squared minus four times a, which is one, times c, which is two, divided by two times a or two times one. So here we will have negative one plus or minus the square root of, this will be one minus eight or negative seven divided by two. Square root negative seven simplifies to i square root seven, or square root seven times i. So we have negative one plus or minus, I'll write this as square root seven times i divided by two. But we want this as two separate parts, meaning the real part and the imaginary part. So we're gonna say r equals negative one half plus or minus square root seven divided by two times i. And because the characteristic equation has complex solutions, the general solution to the given differential equation will be in this form here, where the complex solutions are in the form of alpha plus or minus beta i. So in this case, alpha is equal to negative one-half, and beta is equal to square root seven divided by two. But before we make this substitution, let's do a quick review. Remember, if the characteristic equation has two distinct real roots, this is the form of the general solution. If it has two real but equal roots, this is the form of the general solution. Notice the extra factor of x, and again in our case, since we have complex roots, this is the form of the general solution. So going back to our example, we can now determine the general solution, and then the particular solution based upon the initial conditions. The general solution would be y or y of x equals c sub one, which we don't know yet, some constant, times e raised to the power of alpha x, negative one half times x would be negative x divided by two, times cosine of beta times x, which would be square root seven divided by two times x, and then we have plus c sub two, times e to the power of alpha x, again negative x divided by two, times sine beta x, square root seven divided by two times x. But again, this is an initial value problem, so now what we're gonna do is determine the values of c sub one and c sub two using the initial conditions, meaning we know that y of zero equals zero, and y prime of zero equals two. So because we know that y of zero equals zero, we'll substitute zero for x, and then know the function value must be zero. So if x is zero, this would be c sub one e to the zero times cosine zero. Cosine zero is equal to one, so we would have c sub one plus, again if x is zero, this would be e to the zero, but this would be sine zero, which is equal to zero. So the second term would simplify out, or it would be zero, and we know the function value must be zero, so now we know that c sub one equals zero. This makes the problem a lot easier because if c sub one equals zero, then for our function y of x, this first term would be zero, leaving us with the fact that y of x would just be equal to c sub two e to the power of negative x divided by two sine square root seven divided by two times x. So if this is our function y of x, we can now find y prime of x and use the second initial condition 
to determine the value of C sub 2. Let's go ahead and do this on the next slide. And since y prime of zero equals two, we need to find y prime before we use this initial condition. So notice to find y prime, we'll have to apply the product and chain rule. Let's go ahead and let this be the first function f, and we'll let this be the second function g. So y prime of x is gonna be equal to f times g prime plus g times f prime. So for f times g prime, we'll have this first function times the derivative of g, which is going to be cosine square root seven divided by two x times square root seven divided by two, applying the chain rule. Let's go ahead and write that as square root seven divided by two c sub two e to the power of negative x divided by two cosine square root seven divided by two x, and then plus g times f prime. Well, f prime is going to be c sub two e to the power of negative x divided by two times negative one half. So it's actually gonna be minus, let's write this as minus one half c sub two to the negative x divided by two power sine square root seven divided by two x. And now, because we know y prime of zero equals two, we'll substitute zero for x and set the function value equal to two. So if x is zero, looking at this first product here, we'd have square root seven divided by two times c sub two times e to the zero, which is one, times cosine zero, which is also one, so square root seven divided by two c sub two, and then minus, here we'd have sine zero, which is zero, so this would simplify to zero, so we'd have minus zero equals two, so we have square root seven divided by two c sub two equals two, multiply both sides by the reciprocal, So we know that c sub two is equal to four divided by square root seven. So now we have the information that we need. If c sub two equals four divided by square root seven, the solution to the initial value problem is given here by y of x when we substitute four divided by square root seven here. Let's go ahead and do this on the next slide. So our solution is y of x equals four divided by square root seven e to the power of negative x divided by two sine square root seven divided by two x. To finish, let's go ahead and graph this function and since y of zero equals zero, this function should pass through the origin. Notice how our red function does pass through the origin and also since y prime of zero equals two, notice how if we sketch the tangent line at x equals zero here, the slope of the tangent line does look like it's positive two. I hope you found this explanation helpful.